We have a potpourri of interesting items for you from the United States now. We're talking star spotting, trends and crazy gifts. Catherine Eisman, our LA Breakfast reporter, joins us. Catherine, great to have you with us. You, of course, just can't help star spotting because of where you live and the circles you move in. And the most recent star you've seen is January Jones. Absolutely. Gorgeous January Jones. You know, she might be wearing a fat suit in season five of Mad Men, but when I saw her over the weekend at Larchmont Avenue here in LA, she was looking anything but fat. She's looking trim, taut and terrific. And she had the new man in her life, her nine month old baby Xander in her arms, who was very cute. Xander. Xander. And she was there with her sister, who uh, was helping name. carrying Xander. Yeah. So <laughs> well, it takes two of them January to carry him. Jones. Um, I remember <laughs> her. Now, of course, you say um, Mad Men, of course. Um, and what mm. he was, um, she was about five months pregnant or something when they started, started filming that? Absolutely. This woman has spent more time padded in things than anyone in, on earth. She was five, when for season five, she was five months pregnant. Uh, actually, she was about eight months pregnant, I'm sorry. And so what she, she, uh, Matthew Weiner said that, well, we can't have her pregnant again because she was pregnant in season four. So we're just going to put her in a fat suit. So for the last month of her pregnancy, she was wearing this fat suit. Then for five months, so um, after he was born, she was still wearing a fat suit. And don't forget that in season four, she was pregnant and in between, Queen, she was genuinely pregnant. So this girl is no wonder she's, she's wearing loose fat. flowing clothing. <laughs> she's constantly fat, which is horrible. I think like everyone is just like, she's such a beautiful girl. Let's just put her in a fat suit and make her pregnant. I mean, I think it's like very cruel, but I it's been entertaining um, to watch. I haven't watched Mad Men, so I don't know her from that, but I remember her from Love Actually, because uh, she mm. was one of, the, one of the American hotties in Love Actually, wasn't she? She was, and she was told at the time by her boyfriend that she would never become a star, and now who's laughing? Who's yeah. laughing all the way to the pre pregnancy bank? But, um, yeah, she, she looked great, and she, we still don't know who the father of the child is. She's keeping that hush-hush. Um, but not so the I guy that said her, she'd right? never amount to anything. I bet he's not the father of the child. Um, <laughs> exactly. All right, let's move on. Um, so that takes care of the stars. Now, trends. <laughs> pheromone parties so if you want to find a partner it's not about how they look it's not about how much they earn it's about what they smell like it's true. It's a great equaliser, right? Well, if you've ever gone out with someone and you have always, if you're really attracted to them, you'll notice that you often love the way they smell. Even when they come back from the gym and they're all stinky and disgusting, you like that because yeah. you're attracted Don't to the you? pheromones, which is the chemicals <laughs> that they secrete from their glands. Thank you for that. Anyway, and so there's a new trend that has just started in LA and in New York called pheromone parties, which are capitalising on that. And rather than getting all doled up or kind of practising your pickup lines, all you have to do is wear a T-shirt for three Three nights in a row, you do not wash it. Yep, Are you we don't seeing the wash footage? It. Yeah. Yep, we're having a look yeah, at it now. Not, okay, yeah, you, you do not actually wash this T-shirt, um, and you have to bring it in a Ziploc container, put it in the freezer so that it maintains that fresh odour, and then you bring it to the party, they mark the girls in pink, they mark the boys in blue, and then you spend the beginning of the party going around literally sniffing their shirts, and then at the end you tell them whose odour you like most, and they introduce you to them, and you either decide whether your body is you're playing an evil trick on you or whether your body has led you to the man of your dreams or the woman of your dreams. So what you're saying is, okay, so just very quickly, you wear a t-shirt mm. for three nights so it's impregnated with your smell, you put yes. it in a Ziploc bag, freeze it, take it to freeze. a party and then, then they, they line they them all up. It. Yeah. And the men are in one side in blue, the women are in pink. You swap over teams and you walk around sniffing the opposite sex t-shirt to say, mm, that was good, or oh, that will not be the father of my children. <laughs> so and when you find one end, that you like, okay, so you find one that you like, and then all of a sudden the person whose t-shirt well, comes up to you. Yeah. Yeah, well, at the end, you tell them what there was. They take photos of the people with their T-shirt from the very beginning, and at the end, you tell them what you like, and then they introduce you to that person. And I was talking to a girl who went to one of these uh, pheromone parties, and she said that the guy that she chose based on his T-shirt was actually someone she was really attracted to. And by the end of the night, she ended up making out with him, kissing, snogging. But she said after about an hour and a half, she ran out of things to say. So uh, she said, I, that's the end of it. So clearly, this kind of pre you know, this very primitive indicator might have its limitations. You don't need to talk to your partner though, you can just stand there smelling them, can't you, can, you? all the time, that'd be fine. But imagine, it's a dodgy thing to do because you could be out at a party and smell a t-shirt and decide that you like it and it turns out it's Ron Wilson's t-shirt and, and you're, stuck, you're stuck with him for the rest of the night. <laughs> um, all right, very, very quickly, you found the latest little craze, which is um, flavoursome envelopes. 
Exactly. They're called Flavor Lopes, which is just a fabulous name. And it's the first ever flavored envelope sealer. So if you need an excuse to send a handwritten note, because we all don't do that anymore, basically you pick up one of these, 25 pack, that. 9 95 and they come in five delicious flavors. You've got apple, which I've got here, cherry, grape, orange, and strawberry, and you lick them. I'm, I, can't, I'm, I always end up doing the most demeaning things on live television, but... And that, my, that is so delicious. That tastes like real apples. I wrote, <laughs> can hear laughter. Taste another and, one. Um, <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm not tasting it. No, but um, anyway, no ca <laughs> Yeah, blame others. But um, basically, it's got this fantastic thing, then you seal it. The thing is, though, it's great if you're writing like a love, like a love letter or a thank you note, but if you're using them to send like invoices or final notice bills, it's just weird. it might be a bit of a mixed messages. Yeah, yeah like strawberry it's scented. Like but it's actually, to be honest notice. with you, Catherine, it's a bit weird anyway, because the person who tastes it is the person sending it. Yeah. Technically yeah, speaking, that's the wrong way around, isn't it? So it's actually just it a stupid thing. It was a bit selfish, but it's actually a fun idea because, I mean, it might get you back sending letters. You know, the, actual, the numbers of people sending letters is decreasing dramatically and yeah. actually the postal service is suffering. So maybe it's a way to kind of get you back Which sending thank you yep. notes again. Anything that brings <laughs> back that hokey old idea of putting pen to paper is, uh, is all right by me. Exactly. Um, old Catherine, fashioned values. thank you so much for that. Um, I'll, I'll let you go back out onto the streets and find new interesting stuff to bring into us. Always looking. Lovely to see you. See you. See, just quickly, I never lick my envelopes. I think that it's a bit dirty. I get my a wet what finger. What would you do? And I get a wet finger. So you lick your sink. finger and slide it. No, no, along. I get it under the tap, the sink, and then I wash it around. I used to know someone who had one of those proper rolly things. You know those plastic? They, they were like plastic rollers that sat in little things of water, and so you oh, rolled yes, the envelope on. Yes. I mean, that's a bit, isn't it? In their little home office. Home office. <laughs> <laughs>